Welcome to the episode 26 of the HA Sports Podcast. Super Bowl 57 is done with, it's over, and now we get to recap it, like I'll do today. I'll also recap some NBA trade deadlines, there's a lot of big moves out there, and college basketball rankings are starting to get odd, things are starting to get interesting, but before all that, Super Bowl 57, how did the teams get here? The Chiefs got it done. They they held on against the Jaguars, and then they they edged out the Bengals in the AFC Championship game. The Chiefs really those two wins were very gutsy. The Bengals were too busy talking shit about Burrowhead Stadium. That when you have the goddamn mayor, literally, I mean literally, pretending he was Mario Povich trying to issue a damn paternity test, saying that. Joe, Joe Burrow was Mahomes. Oh, my God. It's just why? That was, you know, that was kind of your loss, Bengals. Good job. You're the Bungles again. Have fun doing that. The Eagles got here a little bit more smoothly. Dominated the Giants. Dominated the 49ers. They simply destroyed both of them. The Niners... Um, in the NFC Championship game, Brock Purdy goes down. They were screwed. Josh Johnson, you think he's going to finish the game? Nope. He suffers a concussion. So, he's done for the night. And the 49ers were done. They were just screwed. For the Super Bowl, this game was a great game. Let's just get that started. It was a great game. The first half, it was really about the Eagles doing what they were doing on offense. The time of possession. That really, that's what really got the Eagles to 24 to 14 lead. Dominated time possession. Jalen Hurts throwing dimes, scrambling the pocket like he need. I mean, the way the Eagles were just abusing that quarterback sneak was just great. Like, like the Chiefs were literally trying everything in their power to stop the quarterback sneak. Couldn't do it. Not once. Literally, not once they could stop the quarterback sneak. The Eagles' offensive line is just too good, and Jalen Hurts just. Has that power, like he can he can carry some can carry the power a little bit. He's a like strong guy, very strong guy. The second half comes around, and Mahomes scores the opening drive for a touchdown. What they really need that was what they really needed. The Chiefs needed that drive to get an opening score, and then just slowly just. Slowly getting momentum, scored again, take the lead for 28 to 27. The Eagles drive in with a field goal. Then they scored again. And then the Eagles punt to Kadarius Tony, has the longest punt return in Super Bowl history, almost a touchdown. Basically, an easy score for the Chiefs. Jalen Hurts did come back, they did score to tie the game at 35. Mahomes had the final drive. And then everybody's favorite play of the game. A little kind of a ticky-tack P.I. call by James Bradbury. Kind of ticky-tack. They weren't really calling that all game. It was called. The Chiefs, Jared McKinnon wisely. McKinnon got the carry. Wisely slid to the one-yard line. They just kneeled and kicked the game-winning field goal. So what was the kind of the takeaway of the game? Jalen Hurts dominated the game. I mean, 300 passing yards, 70 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, a passing touchdown. Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard all did their jobs. So the offense did everything that they needed to do to win. The issue with the Eagles was the defense. And specifically the Eagles pass rush. This was a pass rush that that was third in sacks in NFL history like team wise. Four dudes with ten plus sacks. Fletcher Cox with seven. Where in the hell was that pass rush? Where was it? Because Mahomes was comfortable all night. Mahomes late in the first half. Reaggravated that ankle sprain. He 
he had to get probably he definitely had to get some injections in for the second half to try to numb some of the pain. Just enough for Mahomes to at least be himself out there, which he was. I mean, I mean, Mahomes was taking like he was taking out, taking off the pocket a couple of plays with that bum ankle. Where was the Eagles' pass rush? They couldn't get to him. Like, we get it, it's a, but this is a Patrick Mahomes with a bum ankle. And the Chiefs' offensive line dominated the trenches. And that was really both offensive line dominated the trenches. But the Chiefs, oh my God. The Eagles couldn't get one sack. They got none. I'm not kidding. They got no sacks. Where was, where was the D-line? Let's let's just the only person to D line that even come close to doing a damn thing was Javon Hargrave. Where was Hassan Reddick? Where was Josh Sweat? Where was Fletcher Mandal Cox? The Dominican Sue and Jordan Davis did nothing out there. Where was the Eagles pass rush that really, that what I thought was gonna at least get get a, a couple sacks, at least two, three, zero? All game long, and because Mahomes got comfortable the entire game, when the second half rolled around, they were able to keep doing what they were doing on offense. They, the Chiefs, really played balanced. Mahomes got a couple scrambles. Isaiah Pacheco got some good carries, keeping the offense balanced just enough to get things going. Travis Kelsey, the Eagles could do nothing to guard. Now let's let's get real. There's no team in the league that has an answer for Travis Kelsey. No linebacker can just keep up with him. And every corner of safety, he's just too big. Just Travis Kelsey is just uncoverable. And he is climbing there fast as some of the best tight ends in NFL history. I think Travis Kelsey, Rob Gronkowski, and Tony Gonzalez, three of those dudes have separated themselves as the best tight ends in the league. The, yeah. As crazy as that is. Travis Kelsey already has more receiving yards career-wise than Travis Kelsey. That is not a joke. Now, Gronkowski definitely has more touchdowns. But a couple, couple more elite seasons for Kelsey. It's him versus Tony Gonzalez, in my opinion. One, two, three, four, five straight, six, seven straight a thousand yard seasons for Travis Kelsey. Not even Tony Gonzalez could do that. Not even Rob Gronkowski can do that. The consistency that Travis Kelsey has done his entire career is mind boggling. I think he's gonna end up, in my opinion, the greatest tight end of all time when his career is done. I promise you that. Cause he's gonna be a lead for a couple more seasons. It's just He's just that. He's just that dude. Juju Smith Schuster made some catches, and everybody else made that one made one small play that they needed. So that's really how the Chiefs win. They won because their offense was in sync. They were balanced. The offensive line dominated the trenches, and Mahomes just was being Patrick Mahomes when he was on the field. That simple. That's simple. So the Chiefs are really in prime position to really be a dynasty, and they kind of are already. If we're being five straight AFC Championship games, three Super Bowl appearances, you won twice. I mean, this, I mean, the era that the Chiefs are in is the best the team will ever go, go in. Andy Reid. He's, he's going to stick around. I don't see him leaving. I mean, 64 years old is kind of old for a head coach, but we've seen older coaches. Coach, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. And as for Andy Reid, this really adds to his legacy. This is his second ring. He beats his former team. And as for the Eagles, I don't know what you do. You're still going to be a good team. But are you really going to keep the entire same team? That is just difficult to do. 
Somebody's gonna go for some reason. I haven't. I have not looked up to the cap situation. It's luckily they really they have no no big contracts right now, so Eagles can keep the rest of the guys. But I don't know. I don't know. Some of the defensive players. There's gonna be some questions. Darius Slate's gonna be 32 next year. That's kind of old for a corner. Brandon Graham's going to be 35 years old. That's pretty old for a pass rusher. Although he's been very durable. Fletcher Cox, he's going to be 33. How long How long is he able to keep up his play? That's going to be the question the Eagles have. Can they really dominate? Again, they, they should have the tools to do it. I don't think they're in a bad cap situation where where some portion of players go. I think most stay, if not all. The Chiefs, they can definitely keep the ship going. They really can. And what's almost funny is that in the offseason, we were propping up the Chargers, propping up the Raiders, propping up the Broncos. Turns out that all three of those teams were hacks. Denver had Nathaniel Hackett to deal with. Now, they got Sean Payton. We'll see how they do. The Raiders, they're, they're going to have a, they're gonna have a big offseason because Derek Carr wants out. Derek Carr is not going to accept any trades, so the Raiders are, I guarantee, they're going to straight up cut him. Chargers, you got Brandon Staley to deal with. The Chiefs still own this division until somebody else, until one of those three, builds a team that's just good enough and plays and plays out of their minds. The AFC West is the Chiefs. They just it's that's reality. The clo- the best chance for a team to compete right now is Denver. And that's if everything goes to plan. And as good as Sean Payton is, that's a stretch. It really is. So have fun. Have fun. Have fun. AFC West, have fun the entire AFC. Chiefs are not going to go away. They're just, they're just not. They're not going to go away. They're going to stick around for plenty more years. NBA trade deadline. We had a, lo- we got some big moves. This trade deadline, the biggest one. The Suns' desperation. The Suns got desperate. They made a big trade for Kevin Durant. They got rid of some, I think some multiple first round picks, but they got rid of Mikkel Bridges, Cam Johnson, and Jay Crowder. This was a desperation move, and as as desperation the move really was, the Suns they're trying to salvage of what they have left with the score. Because the Suns are not going to be good in three years. This is a win-now team. I mean, yes, Devin Booker's great. But Devin Booker has proven to me that he is unreliable when he has to win. Devin Booker needs somebody else to win the clutch situations because Booker ain't doing it. We've seen it two straight years. Especially last year. Where they lost in just in humiliating fashion to the damn Mavericks. You had to do something. And the team's kind of injured. Guys like Landry Shemit and Cameron Payne. TJ Warren is back on the damn Suns. When was the last time this dude played basketball? Dude's been a bench player for the Nets. Now he's averaging 9.5 points per game off the bench, so. There's a little depth. But will it be enough? I don't know. The Suns are really praying, really praying that Kevin Durant can average like 28 points. Booker takes a a little bit of a backseat. He'll still score plenty of points. This is a win-now team for Phoenix. And they have to win to make this trade justified. We'll see how it does. It'll be very interesting. 
to look at Kyrie Irving. So, the cancer himself, he is a team cancer. The Nets decided to cut bait, traded him. So, they also get Marky Morris. The Nets also, re- so the Nets are going to receive Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, 2027 second round pick, an unprotected 2029 first round pick, and a 2029 second round pick. So the Mavericks, kind of risky. They're not, it's a little bit to give. It's not, not awful. The question is, is, is Kyrie Irving going to, going to actually play games? Unfortunately, that's the question. Because Kyrie Irving has been a cancer everywhere he goes. At the end, his tenure with the Cavs, Boston, and then Brooklyn. The Mavs are really trying to get that extra push. Because the Western Conference is... It's like no man's land right there. Like, the Nuggets have the number one seed. They're slowly starting to separate themselves. But, I don't know. Are they... I don't know. I don't know if they're that ready for a playoff push just yet. The Grizzlies are still around. The Sacramento Kings are the third seed. The Suns, they're trying desperately to get back. We'll see if it works out out there. The question is, the Mavs defense is probably going to be terrible like it has been all year long. Patrick Beverly, he gets traded, and then the Magic waves him. (laughs) Oh, my God. Poor Patrick Beverly. Thomas Bryant is going to the Nuggets. The Lakers get more bomb. Oh my god. The song more famous than the player itself. By the way, D'Angelo Russell's also going to go to the Lakers. The Lakers are trying to make the playoffs. They're out, but they're only out by a few games. The damn playing tournament. And D'Angelo Russell's been averaging 19 point, nine, like 18 points per game. It's not bad. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Because remember early when he, pretty much everybody in the Lakers wanted the Angelo Russell's ass gone? After him, I think, I think it was him and Nick Young. They they both, like, they hate both had major beef. And he was pretty much ran out of there. The Nets, they're done. The Nets, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, I don't think entirely it's the organization's fault. It has to do more with Kyrie. You just don't know what it was going to do. The Nets kind of did get cute with the moves like Harden and Griffin. Because everybody whatever damn got hurt in 2020. For the Nets, just it was a, another failed experiment. Like they did around 2012 when they got Paul Pierce. They got Kevin Garnett. Just another failed experiment for the damn Nets. The story of that godforsaken franchise. College basketball. Alabama is number one. Their fans are going to be insufferable. Houston's number two. Purdue drops to three after losing to Indiana. Wasn't a bad loss, but... Uh, uh, very interesting. But there was no Northwestern's been playing good, but there's no like the the team did nothing over and again. Like every, like Zach Eady was the only player doing a damn thing against Northwestern. Kayla first wasn't good. Brayton Smith was miserable. He had ten points, but most of those came from three throws. Lawyer just breaked everything. Brennan uh, we'll get to Brennan in a second. Mason Gillis was probably the second best player during the damn game. And I'm going to talk about Bren Newman. I've given up on this guy. I have. I've been hearing 
that this guy can be a good start. You know what? He'll be a mediocre starting guard. Can, can, let's just be honest with that. Congratulations. Congrats. He scored 29 points against Minnesota. Great. In 2021. Great. He has not done much else ever since. He has not done... He has not done much ever since. And this season, all but that one game at Flor- against Florida A&M, he's just shot terrible. 36% shooting. That's terrible. That's terrible. He hasn't made a damn point against IU. Back-to-back zero-point games. Just... Although he only played four minutes in Iowa, but, but he but he had two shot attempts. Just, he's just a he, he's just not good enough of a shooter to to really start. Because at least Ethan Morton is like a great defender, but Brendan Newman's a guy who. He doesn't exactly need touches, but he can use the touches. But whenever he does, he cannot get touches without pissing himself in the damn court. Fletcher Lawyer, I get air players inconsistent. This two points shenanigans has got to stop with this guy. He's a freshman. So, a little grace. We'll give him a little grace. Well, just a freshman. But, man, the inconsistency, he's got to get a little consistent. Because these two-point games, these five-point games, really hurts. Really hurts the team. Now, Brain Smith didn't shoot well at all. Caleb first. He's not a primary officer. Level. What do you want him to do? Six points and six rebounds. That's a, that's a pretty good game for Caleb first most of the time anyways. The simple effect is Purdue just shit the bed against Northwestern. And Northwestern beats the beats a number one team for the first time in their school history. UCLA's ranked fourth. Wow. That is very in, that is very, I I would like to see UCLA at Arizona win on because the final their game in the regular season. In the beginning of March, they'll play against each other again. I want those teams to be undefeated. Kansas 5, 5th, Texas 6, Virginia's at 7, Arizona's at 8th, Baylor's 9, and Tennessee's 10, Marquette is at 11th. Kansas State falls to 12, Gonzaga 13, but they're so damn fraudulent. IU jumps to 14th, Miami 15th, Xavier 16th. Xavier, like not Xavier, no, Xavier's like 16th. St. Mary's 17th. Creighton's at 18th. 19 Iowa State 20. Connecticut 21st. San Diego State 22 TCU 23 Nancy State. Providence is ranked. The Florida Atlantic is ranked. So those are the top 25 college basketball rankings. Which at this point, we're at a point of the season where the rankings is kind of irrelevant. It's now really about which team's looking the best heading to the tournament. Because we really have one month to go before the before the conference t- tournaments really start getting going. And it'll be very interesting to see because this has been a great college basketball season. A lot of great teams. A lot of great teams. Who's going to go out on top? It's anybody's game. Anybody's game. So thanks for watching this episode, and I hope you all enjoyed it.